Hallo, Baby. <lacht> Hello friends, welcome to the channel. Today we have a completely new topic. <laughs> As you might have noticed, the channel has changed topics through its uh, lifetime and uh, that's okay, <laughs> bear with it. It's still an experiment. Today we're trying something new. We are getting our hands dirty with uh, prop making. <laughs> this is actually not a video, it's, uh, it's a tribute. It's a tribute to one of my favorite makers at the moment and I'm talking of course about uh, Adam Savage. And this is where uh, this also... Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave uh, and today we are going to make... <laughs> Uh, I really like Adam. I like everything he does. Uh, I really enjoy uh, watching his channel, Tested. And one of the things I am uh, really fond of uh, is uh, his one day builds. I find them very entertaining, very inspirational and most importantly very educational. One of the things Adam does well, I think, is uh, prop making. And this is what I will try to do also today, uh, being inspired by, by him. So why prop making? Uh, prop making involves a couple of technologies and techniques uh, that I want to get uh, better at and more familiar with. And I'm talking about, uh, of course, digital design and 3D printing. And I'm always trying for ways and opportunities to expand my knowledge horizon within those two technologies. I want to design something from scratch in my computer and then print it on my 3D printer and uh, assemble it, paint it and make it look like the real thing. So the subject I have chosen is Han Solo a Blaster. <laughs> the gun is not very complex geometrically but it has different levels. It has the side uh, on the upper right side and it has uh, the, the handle that is a bit elaborate. So it's, it's a big enough challenge for me to design it in Fusion, in Fusion 360. Uh, it was very hard to find uh, good references with enough dimension but I was able to find some uh, that helped me uh, through the process. These are the best images that I could find online, uh, which uh, I printed out because uh, I kept going back to them very often. Uh, they come from a site called 3 d dasmoncom I will put that into the description. And these blow-up views uh, were uh, good uh, guides for me during the design process. When I design something with the intention to 3D print it, I try to always be aware of the possibilities but mainly the limitations of the 3D printing manufacturing technique. I don't like working with supports that much so I try to avoid them <laughs> at all costs. I find them cumbersome to remove and also I don't like spending too much time sanding uh, the surfaces uh, that are left uh, under the supports. Uh, so I try to break down my object into different bodies uh, that can lay flat on the print bed and uh, that it, so that they don't require any support structures. You see, this is the blaster. <laughs> 76, 76 versions <laughs> or shapes. And uh, here you can see uh, all my components uh, that they are hidden at the moment. It's very important when in Fusion 360 to, to work with different components. This makes life so much easier. I have the barrel. Let me bring everything here. And uh, the barrel, of course, composes of uh, several bodies. We have the front part of the barrel, the mid part of the barrel, uh, some details, the whole uh, back part of it and uh, some other details. The front part was the most interesting part. Uh, you see all these uh, holes and uh, this cylindrical structure and all these uh, cutouts. Uh, I thought it was uh, really fun modeling them. And then we have the actual body of the gun and without the handle of course and uh, these um, flanges here these were a bit um, a, a bit of a challenge but i'm pretty happy how how they turned out then we have uh, the trigger the handle 
and you see I had some uh, rendering on it as well so, uh, I like this cutouts here and uh, as you can see I've made a small bolt uh, I could actually tap these bolts, uh, these holes and uh, have an actual bolt in there but I thought I'd 3D print everything uh, that made it a bit uh, a bit simpler and finally the scope uh, which was uh, the most uh, challenging part I would say I mean you see how many how many different parts uh, the scope composes of and as I said before this is in order to make my manufacturing life easier I want to avoid support structures I want to avoid uh, long prints uh, that uh, they can be a risk and they can take time so I try to break everything down not to the minor detail but to an extent where I can uh, feel confident that uh, printing will go smooth I really like it <laughs> I like I like the side I like uh, this part as I said before I like the handle and um, I'm pretty happy with the modeling uh, job I did on this one This is my 3D printer, it's an Ender 3, uh, the version 2. I have had this printer for about 2-3 years and uh, I think it's good enough, it's good enough for me at least. The only thing to be aware of is uh, every time I want to print something I have to level the bed and clean the bed, and clean the bed surface and this is really crucial for a good print. So this is uh, my printed uh, Han Solo blaster in pieces <laughs> uh, and you can see there are a lot of uh, parts <laughs> uh, but I'm really happy how everything turned out one thing to point out though is that I have now sanded everything with uh, sandpaper of uh, 240 grit but before proceeding to the next step I want to assemble some of the parts and then they will be ready for primer for assembling most of the pieces I will be using uh, super glue and uh, this particular brand uh, that I like working with. And uh, I will start uh, with the side <laughs> which is the most challenging uh, to put together. Uh, it's uh, quite long and I have to be quite careful on uh, gluing especially here at the connection point. There is not too much surface there. <laughs> The only bad thing with super glue is that it doesn't give you too much working time so you really have to be fast because uh, it dries quite quite quickly. And now I have to be fast and careful. And if this doesn't prove strong enough, I can uh, glue them with 5 min epoxy eventually. But um, I will start with super glue and see how long that takes us. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> So as you probably noticed I had some trouble applying the super glue on this large surface and then trying to align both parts so that's why I used 5 minute epoxy which gives me some more working time but yeah it takes 5 minutes to dry <laughs> let's continue I think I will also use 5 minute epoxy to combine those two that's a quite large surface and uh, I want them to be <laughs> structurally strong enough. Starts looking like a blaster. <laughs> And as you see I have this tab here mostly for registration and for making sure the two pieces will arrive at the correct position. Five more minutes to wait. Look ma, no hands. <laughs> I'm quite pleased with how this is turning out. <laughs> uh, it's longer than I thought it would be. <laughs> and uh, my scanner is on as well. 
Nice. And the hammer. Bond. James Bond. I will glue the final pieces and then uh, primer time. Not uh, the perfect weather for painting, but uh, it has to be done, so... <laughs> and uh, I will be using this universal primer. Uh, it's good for everything, I hope. <laughs> so, yeah. Have to remove this first. <laughs> done. That's the workshop, by the way. <laughs> All right, let's let them dry. Today is the day after. Everybody knows that one day build is never a one day build. And uh, the first coat of primer has uh, now dried. So the pieces, they all look really good, but uh, I want to sand them. I have some uh, 320 sandpaper and make them even smoother. Back to sanding. Ah. <laughs> That should be enough sanding for this project. <laughs> they are quite smooth now and uh, they look really nice, but uh, they need uh, a light coat of primer. Even colder than yesterday, but uh, it's a great day. <laughs> Everything seems to be dry right now, so I think I will uh, go ahead and uh, try to paint uh, Hans Holo Blaster. I have found the reference image. Gun is uh, a dark metallic color besides of course the handle. I need to come up with a good brown first. <laughs> I'm using acrylic paints. They're pretty cheap and uh, I find them quite easy to work with. I will start there and see how that looks. Maybe add a slight bit of this one to break the brown. It's more like a combination between brown and red. Yeah, I think I like that. Let's try it here on the back side. Close to what I was hoping for. Oh, I really like this color. It really looks like wood. <laughs> and I want the grain to be going like that. Done with the first one. <laughs> Making progress. <laughs> I need to get into all those crevices here. One thing I don't really understand, or I don't yet know when you're painting something with acrylic paint, is I have mixed an amount of paint that I might need, but uh, what happens when that runs out and uh, I need to make the exact uh, same tone? Uh, yeah, that's something I've been wondering about. <laughs> uh, if I miscalculate the amount of paint I need of this particular tone and I need to remake it, what happens then? <laughs> if you have any solutions, please, again, let me know. <laughs> and also, is there a way to avoid or to hide brush strokes? Yeah, <laughs> there is so much still to learn. <laughs> I will try to do those things here uh, around the side and I want to make them, yeah, kind of uh, dark yellow. Uh, that will be a nice contrast with the metallic of, uh, of the side.
Okay, I think I'm quite happy with this one actually. It will provide good contrast. All right, good enough. Let's move on. So next I want to do my, my bolts on a knife. <laughs> I want to paint them. I want to paint them a light metallic color. And um, I have those uh, colors from, um, from Revel. And yeah, this one looks quite representative. But those are in water base, so that's a challenge there. I will try to use them anyway. Uh, start with the bolts. And then I also have this color that would fit the gun and the sight. Uh, I hope it's enough. But again, these are not water-based, so I'm not really sure how they work. Yeah, everything is an experiment. Let's try it. Uh, two of the bolts that uh, they go into the handle, I will uh, paint them uh, this, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's a kind of a brass kind of color. I think it will give a nice contrast. I might start with those actually and see how they fit uh, the handle. And again, a disclaimer, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to make the perfect uh, prop. Uh, I'm just experimenting and try to... So let's see how that goes. I will just paint two of this uh, brass yellow color. Oh, that's a nice color. Talk about luck. <laughs> nice. Let's move on. Okay, as the next step, I'm going to paint both the side and uh, the gun itself. And everything will have uh, this color. I don't know how it will turn out, but uh, I will use the same for everything and then with weathering I will try to make some uh, variations. Again, I haven't those, I haven't used those so we'll see, but I will definitely use a bigger brass because uh, that's a lot of area to cover. I think that looks pretty good. It applies quite well. Wow, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, the color looks great. It's already dried in some uh, in some places, so yeah, I really like it. I think that's enough painting for, for a day. I'm pretty much done. I will let everything dry. Uh, then some assembly, some clear lacquer to protect uh, everything and then uh, weathering. It's 8 o'clock in the evening, it's uh, minus 5 degrees outside, but um, I really want to finish my, my blaster. Uh, I need to protect it with clear varnish before I do the weathering. Uh, this is the clear varnish I will use. So I'm gonna spray it outside and then take it inside and uh, let it dry overnight before I do the weathering tomorrow. Oh, it's cold! <laughs> Not ideal conditions, but uh, hey. <laughs> Art requires sacrifices. I think that's good enough. Let's go inside and uh, have a well-deserved drink. So now we are at the home stretch. <laughs> the only thing left is some weathering to make uh, this look really authentic. It's a quite crucial stage because uh, this looks quite good, so <laughs> you could either make it look better or much worse. But uh, yeah, no guts, no glory. So let's see how this turns out after some weathering. Mixing uh, some black and, uh, and some brown and uh, 
a lot of water and hopefully the lacquer is protecting the ground colors of my gun so uh, the acrylic paint that I will put on it will not damage uh, the underlying paint. Okay, let's commit! <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of it now. <laughs> I'm quite happy with this part. I want to get all the weathering, especially in the crevices here between the different, the different parts. That will make it look more realistic and authentic and hide some of, of my previous crimes. <laughs> I'm really happy with the weathering so far, but there is one last detail that I want to add. I want to make it look like the paint has been uh, chipped off, uh, like this uh, image over here. So I want to try a technique called the dry brushing where I apply very little grey paint and just go very lightly over the high points or, uh, or the corners so that it makes the gun look uh, banged up. I think it looks good. Yeah, really, really nice. It's not an easy technique. I'm so happy with this one. I, I think it's turning out great, but I better stop on this side. This is it. I consider this uh, now done. <laughs> well, actually there are two more steps. I will protect everything with clear lacquer, so that it will stand uh, through time. And then uh, some beauty salts. But uh, so far I think it looks amazing. <laughs> It was a really learning experience and I'm quite happy with the final result. Amazing.